and says five, four, three, two, one, and we're good. That means we're live. What's up, guys? Welcome, Tribe Builders, to another epic interview. We have Jeff Miller here, one of our seven figure CEO clients. He was in an authority accelerator and one of my really, really good friends, really my first client ever. Uh, and he actually helped me uh, grow my agency when I was starting out my Facebook ads agency. Uh, and in this interview, you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to talk about his journey and how he went from absolutely zero audience to growing his Facebook group over 44,000 members yeah. and uh, making over a million dollars through yeah. coaching and uh, courses. And it's it's been a hell of a journey. So dude, yeah. thank you so much for being here. It was crazy because like like I don't know our official like first date anniversary, but I still remember when you're like, hey, I'm from Ohio. I think I'm going to come by your office. And I was like, OK, but who and how do we know each other? And it took me a while to realize that like, we've been talking on Messenger for a while. I'd seen your interview series with Jordan Parker and you had come in and you're wearing this like uh, safety hoodie. It's like, all right, oh, well, I'm going to be here with my car and my Starbucks in case I want to leave type thing. Right. <laughs> And then we ended up like ballparking an idea for like two or three hours. And you were like, you should be doing this and doing that. And I was like, you should be doing this and doing that. And we use this like this whiteboard right here. And it's been like a crazy ass journey ever since. Um, and the numbers are real. The, the dollars are real. The velocity of money is real. It's like, like once you figure out something that works, like you had this like weird obligation just like to tell everybody like, like imagine if Bill Gates was like, nah, I got this stuff I don't want to share with anybody. Like you got to be more verbal and 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 more yelly with like your solutions to the world's problems. Otherwise, people still have those problems. And that's how you were with me. That's how I am with my butt fam and our logo. Um, and 44,000 people later, we started with zero people, zero audience. We're about to do a purge, which is super going to be fun. Um, and yeah, things are working. And yeah, it's pretty darn cool. So out of context, that's super weird for everybody that doesn't know what the butt fam is. Um, it, yep, there it is. <laughs> uh, so uh, Jeff uh, opened up his Facebook group and called it Agency Scaling Secrets. And uh, what, was it Ball Deep who pointed out that yeah. the acronym so, was ass? <laughs> so this is the problem, right? Like at this point in my journey, like I was not particularly confident. I was still afraid of failure and I wasn't trying to be successful, I was trying to not fail, which is a, like very different lines of thinking. Like when you're trying to not fail, you're trying to not fuck up and, and your, your body and your brain response is a lot different than like an A plus player, right? Like it's fundamentally different. And you had pushed me to like, Jeff, you need to open like a program and a course. Otherwise you're gonna hit your audience. Like you need to have a paid offer. And I was like, yeah, that sounds cool, whatever, I don't care. And then we did it and I freaked out and I was like, all right, well, this is real. And now I need a cover photo, right? And I hired Jeff Minibach. Like I know how to do a cover photo, but like I, I was afraid of failing. So I, I pay Jeff Minibach, who now runs like a million dollar business, right? He's like massively successful. He's got like 60 employees. Like it was so cool, right? And I pay him money and he builds it out and he puts it in. He was like, see you later, bye. I was like, awesome. And Andrew's internet just broke. So it's just you and me, guys. Look at that. Um, and then are we st we're still live, right? Yo, if we're still yeah, live. I'm still here. Be live is just weird. I just <laughs> went down for a second. I am back up. I'm going to put myself back down, but keep going with what you were talking about. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so funny. Um. No, I need to see your face. This is too. This is me like talking to myself. I need. I need an Andrew here. Otherwise, it's just going to be strange to sell. But, um, but yeah. So Jeff Minibach puts out the cover photo, and I'm like, Ball Deep, I need you to join up and like join the bench because like, perfect. Because nobody's going to join an empty group. So like, so like, come on, join up, right? And I originally met him through, uh, through Sema and Nick Robbins and um, John Logar and things like that. And I really value what he had to say. And we're still friends to this day. Like, we'll just randomly talk and all that. And Baldeep is like, like, he's pretty street. And he's like, yo, Jeff. And I was like, what's up? He's like, just so you know, your cover photo says ass. And I was like, like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, man, agency scaling secrets. And the way Jeff Minibach put the, like, the logo and put the brand and the letters was like, it was agency scaling secrets. So if you looked here, it was just ASS. And I was like, no, oh, God. Uh, every, like again the failure like i was afraid of people making fun of like agency scaling secrets and ass and all that i didn't know what to do so i talked to arnie giski and mark levine who lived in miami at the time and they're like man just go full on butt just just do it and like i talked to you andrew and you're like man own the logo own the ass and i was like i don't know what that means but okay and that really started my journey from like 
like avoiding failure into moving into like winning. Um, and ever since then, it's been the butt fam, the ass fam. Like we've got like huge butts like printed out in the office. We've got magnets somewhere over here. I've got a book with a butt on the logo. And like it has really attracted like a damn good tribe of like people that like we can give each other shit and it's okay and to criticize each other and, and solve each other's problems and move forward and be like, this is okay and this is not as not okay. And that's that's fundamentally different than I think what you see inside of click funnels, which is where you're like, you're always kind of suspicious of everybody's comments. You're like, hmm, right? Like it, it it feels different. And like the ass fam, like the, the butt brings people together. It's so strange, right? Um, we consistently see people that like are joining up 100, 200, 300 people a day consistently. Uh, we're purging now, which I think is very healthy for us because the group is too big and, and the culture, which matters is like, it's kind of like off track a bit and the purge will help like bring it back together. Mm -hmm. But like, it was literally like, it's the ass, it's the butt. And and you look at the, 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 the groups on the side and like, there's always one and one of them is the butt and it's so <laughs> damn cool. But yeah, yeah, it was it was very strange um, oh, that that's awesome unfortunately not everybody can put a butt in their banner uh yeah. <laughs> especially that good of looking cartoon butt it like looks. you i we tried to recreate the butt because originally you got it from buzzfeed right and yeah. it, you can't recreate okay we're, we're done with talking about the butt <laughs> uh i want to get everybody out there tangible information yeah. and uh tactics and strategies of how you went from zero to uh, 44,000 people in your Facebook group and, yes. uh, and, uh, over a million dollars from coaching and courses yes. outside of putting a butt in their banner. Yes. So it's not I, just a butt. Yes. I want to go back to where we started, which was, um, mapping, you mapped out your course on your whiteboard. Yep. You went through the steps of how to create a minimum viable beta launch course. Yep. Right. And you just took what you knew from your agency mm -hmm. and mapped it out to be like, I can transfer these steps to people in a video and coaching format. And this is what it's going to look like, which yeah. you, you knocked it out. You knew exactly what you wanted to teach, which was impressive. And then it's about getting it to people launching yeah. your beta program. Yeah. So can you go through that process and, and kind of what we did together to get that off the ground and what the results were? Yeah, definitely. So like we went through a, a very cool brainstorming session, which is effectively throw everything on the wall and see what sticks. And you don't want to do self-limiting or self-criticism. You're just like, I'm just going to vomit everything on the wall. And it's never going to come out like a flow. It's going to be like random spurts of like smartness, depending upon how much caffeine you've had at that moment and what inspiration is circling through you. So like the brainstorming exercise always felt like we, oh, that's a good idea, put on the wall and then go back to what we're doing. That's a good idea, put on the wall, go back to what we're doing. And so the, the mistake that most people make when they're trying to map out their course or what they could do in exchange for money or their offer is they sit down with 30 minutes and say, we're going to do it. It's like, that's, that's not how it worked for me. That's not how my brain worked, which was like, I have like a burst of inspiration. I got to write it down. Burst of inspiration, got to write it down. And by the end of like two or three hours, I had like 20 to 30 bullet points. I didn't try to make it narrative style and like week one, week two, week three. Nope. It was just 30 bullet points on the wall. And you can see the whiteboard, like it was just everywhere, right? Only after I had 20 to 30 did I start organizing the way that made sense. And I didn't know the titles. I just started grouping them together. So I could put a circle around there, a circle around there, move it over, stuff like that. And after a while, the, the, the bullet points began to just kind of speak out. So like one of the challenges that most people had was like, you know, I'm generating all my leads for my clients, but my clients are saying these leads are no good. And I was like, yeah, that's because you're not doing sneaky surveys and welcome texts and call recordings like a normal agency should, right? I didn't know that wasn't normal. In my background, that's normal. I need somebody like you to sit across the table and be like, mm-mm, that's different, right? Mm -hmm. And so we had sneaky surveys, welcome text, uh, call recording, call tracking, stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it was like that, that circle became prove your leads are legit. And I was like, oh, that's good, right? Mm -hmm. Um, other people are just throwing ad copy on the wall and seeing what sticks and not really knowing that you're supposed to run customer research. I come from a fortune 50 consulting background of like, oh, we got to run customer research. I read Ryan Levesque's ask book. You can do six figure hundred thousand dollar month customer research for like 30 bucks a day. And I was like, yeah, everybody should be doing this. I, I did it for my agency. Like I've done it like for Intel and Ericsson, my MBA program. Why aren't you doing it for your agency? I need someone else 
to have a conversation with me and walk me through steps or be like, no, that's not true. So he put that on the wall and that became, you know, running customer research and that became a unique selling position. And now you could go to any business and be like, look, I'm not the expert. I'm good at running customer research as this flies around. I'm good at running customer research. So I don't have to be the expert in your business. I just have to run customer research so that we know if this is going to work before it goes live. And now you could do business with as many people as possible without having to like have niche fear and niche regret. And the end result was after like, I would say two or three hours of like random spurts of smartness, you'd start to circle and you would have modules, not weeks, but modules. And each module is designed to solve a problem. Then once you've solved enough problems, you can organize into weeks and people will just like flock to say like this problem is costing my business hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. The value that you're providing, the problem you're solving costs is going to save me so much money. It, it's stupid for me not to pay you my hard earned dollars in exchange for solving this problem. And I think the biggest reason why I haven't had more success or people on my program haven't had more success is ultimately uh, because I keep thinking this is standard and I don't have to talk about it. I keep thinking this is not like a serious problem. I keep thinking, oh, obviously they should be doing this. That is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Like you should always be running real life customer research, asking your tribe, what's the number one problem in your business right now? Like mm -hmm. what's the number one thing stopping you from being forward? How mm -hmm. can I move you forward faster? Like mm -hmm. those types of questions. They're going to tell you, they're going to mm -hmm. tell you right to your face. Like I can't figure out how to do X. That becomes part of your course and your consulting program and problems that you're solving. I can't figure out why this isn't working. Let's figure it out over the course of 30, 60, 90 minutes. If you're not really sure, I'm pretty sure you can engage higher level critical thinking, solve it for him, three or four other people, record that, that becomes a module in your course and you never have to deal with it ever again. And I just finished re-recording one third of my course, which is divided into uh, prospecting, sales and fulfillment. I got that line of thinking by doing interviews with people like you and other people at my peer level above, above or below. And I'm finding my vibe and my theme and my unique selling position prospecting engine, sales engine, fulfillment engine. And mm -hmm. now I've recorded my sales engine and people are closing $2,000 a month deals like consistently. Like we had somebody join up three weeks ago that is on their third, 1997, like 1,997. That's because I re-record the sales engine. Why did I re-record it? Because I asked everybody else what their number one problem is, right? And so it's you have to go through this consistent, it's kind of like going to the gym process, but you need to have somebody on the other end, like a coach, to, to counteract your self-limiting beliefs saying like, oh, this is normal. Everybody's doing this. It's not. Mm -hmm. If it was, they'd be as successful as you or more, right? Um, and so like, I don't know if that directly answered the question, but I'm pretty sure someone watching this is like, that I can do that. Like I no, can, I, love, I, can I, love how, yeah. I love how deep you went with that, where uh, it was going from minimal viable, throwing shit on the wall, organizing yep. it, knowing that it's not going to be perfect, to reiterating it, uh, changing, like going through different versions and doing that through asking your clients, asking whatever you want to call them, clients or students, we call them clients, but yep. uh, asking them, what's the roadblock? What are the pains? What are the problems? Yep. And changing up your versions of your coaching program yep. through uh, research. Um, yep. So I love that. What I wanted to jump into were right off the bat, launching it, marketing yep. style, where um, you went through a process of doing, just giving so much value on weekly lives. Yeah. Um, and then launching. So what was on your personal profile? Yeah. So with no Facebook ads, no. with no complicated funnels, no complicated email sequences, just posting on Facebook. Yeah. So what was your experience with your first launch on your personal profile? So I think one of the things that we talk about is go to where your tribe exists and hang out with them, right? Like if, if you don't have food here, go to the food, right? If you don't have people they can serve here, go to where they are and have a conversation, interact and, and attempt to solve their problems openly and honestly, right? And so I had three tribes that I was part of and I'd always devote 15 to 20 minutes, maybe in 30 minutes to each tribe each day. So that ended up being like 90 minutes in my morning, interacting with my tribe, and as I was attempting to solve problems on the thread, which gets like tens of thousands or even hundred thousands of views, um, I would learn, set a higher standard. And as I would answer these threads and answer these questions in such an in-depth way, people would say, hey, I should pay attention to this guy. And on Facebook, it's very, very easy to see like that guy is smart. I'm gonna click it and follow his stuff. And so that's what I did on the first phase. What was really good for me and my journey is that like, as I would formulate ideas, 
other people would be like, or, and then I would do it, which was like really uh, helped accelerate my own actual business. Um, because you could talk to millionaires on Facebook all the time, right? It was like absolutely fantastic. And then what I started to do was as people started to ask me questions, I immediately got overwhelmed, like immediately. There were, there were PMs unanswered, threads unanswered. It felt like somebody disappeared. You ever go to a forum and like it just ends? You're like, like what happened, right? And uh, that was very, very frustrating for me because I did not want to give that experience because I had been given that experience to somebody else. It was like I didn't think that was kosher to do. Mm -hmm. So what I started to do was every Wednesday, sorry, no, it was every Monday morning at this point, it was, it was me going live on my personal page, simply answering the questions that I had gotten in PMs. Mm -hmm. I would just go sit down Sunday, copy and paste all of them, put them into a slide deck and answer them. And that felt okay with me because I would say like, Hey, I know it's important to you. I get it. I just can't answer an in-depth question like this through text and one sentence answers. So mm -hmm. can I answer this in depth Monday at 8 a.m.? They would say yes. So all of a sudden everybody was cool. And now they were only answering really important questions or they were only asking really important questions. And it kind of evolved into a thing where I was then going over ideas of my agency, like, like how do you leverage customer research for bike shops and land a 10K a month account? How am I gonna answer that by PM, mm -hmm. right? A good luck. But if I had 15, 20 minutes to communicate an idea on a slide deck, that could work. People would ask questions like, how did you set up a referral program? I don't want to say just pay them 20%. That's not good enough. Like you have to understand that like people won't refer you business just because of dollars alone. You have to have a great product or service and then that will incentivize people to send you business. That isn't a PMable answer. You have to answer it in lunch, learn live. So I was doing my coffee talks with Jeff. And for anybody watching this, you can go scroll back on my personal profile like two years ago. You can see good old country boy Jeff trying to figure out the internet. And like the internet would go bad and go right and go wrong and it would phase out and get weird. And my slides wouldn't be ready because I did them Sunday night on two Frappuccinos and there'd be typos and ideas that didn't work. Nobody cared. They just wanted their problems solved. That was it. Like that was it. And so when I would do a real honest attempt on Monday at eight in the morning and walk in the office and go over my slide decks and be like, hey, Alex, thanks for asking that question by PM. Here's my thoughts. Now, all of a sudden, people felt like that, that it was OK to follow and interact and trust me, but in a way that I wasn't overwhelmed, which was massively important. So I was doing my coffee talks with Jeff. And here's what's crazy. I was doing like every Monday at like eight in the morning. Yep. And for some reason, like that attracted like two tiers of people like like people from my three tribes, like half of them were like in England, half of them were from my time zone and, and a huge chunk of them were from Australia. I don't know why, but we had like this like weirdest collected group of like individuals that were like, yo, Jeff, what's up? Have my coffee with you. I was like, hello, internet stranger, right? Like, what do I say to that? Right. And here's what's crazy. I did those, I think for six weeks. Yep. No emails no complicated funnels, not doing a seven day challenge, just simply saying, hey, ask me a question and I will do my real honest attempt at solving it and answering the way that's repeatable makes a lot of sense. And because I had gone through a similar journey and figured out a solution, I could probably like answer them faster if I couldn't, I'd read you know, a book like Jay Abraham or Ryan Levesque or, or, or something like that, that would help me formulate an answer. And I would say like, I haven't done this, but maybe this could work. If you wanna try it, you can and let me know. And it worked. Right. So I did that for six weeks. And what was funny is like, I think on the seventh, you're like, Jeff, it's time to launch. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, Andrew, please don't make me do it. Please don't make me do it. Like, it's going to fucking happen. And I remember being so sinking back to the trying not to fail uh, part of my brain, which is where you go when you need to be safe. That's where you need to be go when you're out on the edge. Like every time you're like, you know what? Hey, uh, I, I don't know if this could work. And your brain goes back to its cave, right? And I remember my cave, this was in the South Beach apartment and you were there and I was like, this is no good. You, yeah. And you're like, screw it, launch. And I was like, fine. And I clicked post and I was saying, hey guys, I'm launching an inner circle. There's everything that you're getting. No sexy bullet points. Just like, here's the stuff, right? And I, I shut the laptop. Like I was just so afraid of failing. And then I woke up and I had like 200 people saying, which, yo, I'm which in. Which you're not supposed to do, by the way. No, not but at all. it still worked out. So keep yes, going. it still worked out. Like, like yeah. you've definitely like refined the process to a point where like looking back, I was like, don't do that. But we, 
I didn't have any idea, right? Like I'm just trying to like fail forward, I guess, right? But yeah. we turned it on um, and I mean, anybody here can go back and I'm kind of making up these numbers, but I feel confident saying 200 people raise their hand and said, Jeff, I'm, I'm interested in taking my hard earned money and giving it to you in exchange for solving more problems and moving forward faster with my own uh, offer out in the marketplace. Um, and at this point we're doing Facebook ads for local businesses and things like that. But effectively, like I launched and I, I had people just uh, like, I don't want to say her name. You know what I'm talking about? She was like, Jeff, yeah, here's my credit card. It just shows it on the camera. And I was like, this has never happened before. Oh, my <laughs> God. And you immediately don't think you're deserving or good enough. But people don't care. Like, like they've got problems that are costing them six or seven figures per year. Like if they can't do it, they can't live their life. And they're like, hey, you know what? I'm willing to put my hard earned money into you. And I was like, that seems really cool. Um, mm -hmm. and that's been a repeatable process for me, but effectively, like I launched my paid coaching program, uh, because I was doing my lunch, learn and lives because I was doing a real honest attempt at solving people's problems. I was part of, of tribes. Um, and that's, that's what you talk about as well. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was a long winded answer to, I don't know, something, but yeah. So good. So you yeah. had over 200 comments. It was, a. Uh, do you, do you feel comfortable sharing the numbers from your initial launch? I'm pretty sure with the initial launch, we brought on like 20 or 30 people at a 997 price point. Uh, yeah. my, my inner circle, that's what we're calling it. The price point has definitely jumped a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm totally okay with that. Like, I, I feel like I should be charging two, three times more, but I, I don't dislike the, the, the rate that we're charging now. Um, yeah. But we were charging 997 then. It was effectively our beta for like six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. Um, and everybody was super psyched to take a behind the scenes view. Uh, of what I was doing, see like my ads, my funnels, my processes, my steps. At this point, um, one of the things I could do was like, you could see me actually sell uh, live. And it wasn't live, it was just like, I recorded it live. So it was like literally like me, I would turn the camera around, click record, and I would sell to a client for like two, five, or even $10,000 a month. And everybody was like mind blown. Like at this point, everybody was just saying, hey, here's my ad and just shoving the ad in the client's face. And I was the only person going, why don't you sit down like a doctor and have an onboarding session and have a conversation and then know if you actually solve the problem and stop showing them the ad, they're gonna steal it. That's why everybody's taking your stuff. Instead, just do a whiteboard and draw squiggles on a napkin and they're gonna pay you three grand. And everybody's like, that's not true. There's no way it's gonna happen. I was like, fine, watch the recording and $3,000 later, right? Um, so yeah, I feel confident that we brought on like 20 people at 997. Everybody yeah. loved it. Um, and since then, like we've increased our prices by a lot. And we're actually getting better results at a higher price point, which is very, very interesting. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so everybody out there, if you have any questions, this interview is for you guys. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. We'll make sure to answer uh, all of them if you ask them on the live. Um, and if, uh, if you get anything out of this, hit the heart button, hit the like button. Helps with the algorithm. Helps reach more people. Helps help more people. Um, and... Uh, and we just went through how you built up your personal profile, how yep. you launched your first beta, uh, got it out there. We launched your uh, Facebook group with elephant gifts. We yes. just made a post for a uh, for a cheat sheet yeah. uh, and asked them to drop an elephant gift. And you got how many comments on on that one? That, that was so funny because like it's so funny like the the Jeff I am now is an entirely different line of thing than the Jeff I was way back in the day, like trying not to fail, trying to be in the safe space, trying to like not do anything so massively different. And I really required somebody like you saying like, yes, you can, let's, let's go. Right. And you, you literally had to like pull me. And like, I remember Jeff, you're opening your group. And I was like, no, I'm not. And you're like, yes, you are. And I was like, fine. And we're sitting down and I've got my laptop and you've got your laptop and you're showing me how to do many chat sequences. And you could like click it and then sign up and then get the gift, but you had to go to the group. And I was like, I have no idea how to do that, but I'll, I'll pretend to learn, go for it. And you're telling me, I was like, I, I couldn't, I was too busy trying not to fail with the group. Right. And I remember you're like, Jeff, it's time to open the group. And I was like, Oh God. Like, I remember like, like, I don't know if I can do this. I had like the laptop with the pillow and all that stuff. Um, and we turned it on. And again, I was so afraid to shut the laptop and I left. And one of the, one of the things was, Hey guys, if you want to join up, leave an elephant gift. And anybody here can go back and see like when we launched the AskFam group. Um, 
and the you can click on load more comments and the comments won't load there's too many elephant gifts there's like 550 elephant gifts and i was like oh my god like like why would people want to join a group oh like i like i was still trying to not failure and the not failure process brings a lot of like devaluing of what you can do and what you should be doing. Now I'm going, of course they would want to join, like we're solving million dollar problems and like people are letting clients, like of course, but that's not where I was. Um, but yeah, it was like 500 elephant gift comments and you couldn't respond to them. Your laptop would like spin up, trying to load up the gifts and Facebook wouldn't load the gifts. And I couldn't actually reply to each person saying, hey, I've just sent you the link. I've just sent you the link. I've just sent you the link. Um, and so after a while, we just had to put the link in the post and leave a comment saying, yo guys, sorry, nothing's working. Click the link above. We had 500 people in 24 hours Yeah. Re request to actually join the group. And yeah. now we're doing that probably like on a daily basis. I love it. So yeah. that was your initial launch for the group. And Steve is asking, what were your strategies for, uh, growing the group? And really what it was, was, um, uh, being active in other Facebook groups, showing up, serving them. People yep. would add you as a friend on your personal profile and you would go live every single week and post other content and just be consistent. Yep. Um, and then it was um, putting up one post saying, hey, I have a free cheat sheet if you want it. It's in my group. And they, uh, I, I think you put up elephant gifts or told them to put up elephant gifts because I was in Thailand a few weeks prior. Yeah. And you were like, oh, that would be funny. And then yeah. you got over 500, had yeah. 500 people join your Facebook group yeah. uh, in a day or two. Um, and then from there, your Facebook group grew organically. My, my, uh, it's just consistency. Yeah. Like Correct. you showed up consistently yep. with serving your clients or serving, serving your members. They would invite people into your Facebook group. Yeah. You were also doing interviews weekly with yep. people outside of the Facebook group, correct? And uh, or inside of your Facebook group from uh, experts, and they would bring more people into your Facebook group, correct? So, were there any other strategies um, that you would add on top of that that worked really well for you that you pulled out of the program? If only they had gotten a ticket to Tribe of Buyers, they could have seen my whole presentation and behind the scenes, right? <laughs> um, What's funny is like when I presented, I think we were at like 36,000, we're now at 44,000, which is like absolutely crazy. But mm -hmm. uh, you and I coined the term uh, group engine, which mm -hmm. is the thing you need to do on a daily basis to make sure that what you're talking about makes sense, have an honest dollar driven relationship with your tribe and never feel like you're being abused or abusing them. Um, I, I'm very happy with the culture that we've developed and I've never felt like I had to be a dancing monkey saying, yo guys, like red or blue, what's up? Have to drive engagement. Like it, it always felt like I didn't have to say that because I was doing stuff that, that spurred great conversation. So like one of the, per, what the parts of the, the group engine is like consistently asking like customer research style questions like guys, what's the more problem you're having with the agency right now? Is it blank, blank or blank? Let's start talking. And what's really, really cool is like, we'll have 200 to 300 to 400 real life human beings saying, this is my problem with my agency. And that will spur really cool conversations because like people will naturally solve each other's problems of like, yo, I can't figure out how to get a client. And somebody who is as good as anybody else out there be like, hey, have you tried blank? Yeah, I have, but I'm not really sure. But what about this thing? Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work for me either. Somebody else chimes in. You have this like encyclopedia of knowledge going all the way down. And what's crazy is like, I know the people that are commenting on there and they're doing like three to $5,000 a day, a day. Do you know how much it would cost to get advice from somebody doing a million dollars a year for them just pull out two hours of their conversation of their day and just answer your questions and then have all their like super successful buddies come in. Like that's invaluable, especially for somebody just starting out. Those types of conversations happen all the time. And specifically because I'm going up there and saying, guys, what's the biggest problem you're having in your agency right now? And it changes on like a weekly or biweekly or monthly basis. Like sometimes like I can't figure out how to get clients. Like it ain't happening. So we'd have like a really awesome conversation on there. Some weeks it's like I can't figure out how to, to, to uh, my, all my leads aren't showing up. Like that's another problem, right? Well, we can figure it out on the thread or even something else. Like whatever the problem is, it's a problem unique to you, but not the first time that problem has showed up. And the people that can move from problem to solution fastest, like they end up winning the marketplace. So I'm always mm -hmm. running customer research on a habitual type of environment. Like every Monday is customer research. Um, 
like going to the gym, like just do it. Just start asking questions. What I discovered, by the way, is like half the time, what I thought was the biggest problem with my group was not, was not the problem. There's been some times like in the middle of Corona, everybody's like, oh my God, my clients aren't renewing, my clients are canceling. But that's not actually the problem that everybody had in the group. The problem had, I can't figure out how to migrate my offer to an online offer and bring my clients into the 21st century. That's how people are talking. I thought mm -hmm. it was signing clients. Nope, that's not how people are talking about their offer. And so when you use tribal language, which is how people talk about their problems, you can have a better conversation, right? So that's like Mondays, right? So we have like really great conversations on there. And so we have Mondays. And on Tuesday, uh, depending upon like your uniqueness or what works and things like that, I'll announce a masterclass. If it looks like that number one problem is like such a big problem that it's worth me paying an expert or, or creating a masterclass to solve and saying, hey guys, this is gonna cost money, um, then I will announce it on a Tuesday. Say, hey, here's everything that we're doing. The agenda, by the way, is from the customer research. Yeah, so can I stop you right there yeah. for one second? Yeah. What Jeff is going through right now is the uh, group content engine uh, that we've created together since he was my first client. And we really like through this whole process, just working hand in hand together. Yep. Um, and this shit is powerful. So if mm -hmm. you want to take notes on just the consistency of content, take notes. Uh, and uh, so you went through Monday, now on to midway through Tuesday. Correct. So Monday is the customer research. This allows me to actually know what I should be talking about. Like it, it's one thing to like sit in a room and be like, oh, we're going to create all this stuff and everybody's going to love it. Not so much. No, 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 That doesn't quite work that way anymore. Like what, what, what problem are you having in your business? Great. Have a cool conversation. By the way, guys, I think I found an expert that knows how to solve this. I got to pay them for their time. So I'm going to sell tickets. Is that cool? Here's everything that you're going to get. Yes, this does cost money. It's X number of dollars. If you're interested, comment below. Those two things, by the way, will play Facebook's algorithm game. It's not meant to play the game. It's a side effect of like, I don't care if it's 500 comments or Facebook doesn't care if it's 500 comments or 500 reds versus blue comments. Right. But people care. Like when you join a group and it's all like, I like red, I like blue, I'm done. But if you join a group and it's like a real conversation, like, like that, that's good right there. People care. And guess what? People have money. And if it's a big enough problem and you, you do, your gosh darn honest truth about making sure you can solve people's problems. It's like, hey, I've hired this expert. Uh, they're gonna teach all this stuff with the upcoming masterclass. It's $97. It's not required. If you wanna take a next step, here's a link. Let's go. Comment. So now, by the way, as a side effect, the ass fam at 1,000 people or 5,000 people or even 100 people had engagement that was comparable to groups 10 times the size. And it wasn't shitty engagement. These were real life conversations that were damn good. Like, wow. Like we have people that are doing, and I'm in the Facebook ad agency space. So this may not make a lot of sense for everybody like watching it, but I know of a guy that's doing 150 HVAC installation jobs every single month. He's on the HVAC thread answering questions. This guy is doing 150 jobs a month. He runs an agency. That's his client's output. He can answer your questions. Nobody knows who this guy is and I don't want to share his name, but he's there. That engagement is worth millions. You get to have a conversation with him and he's there because of the custom research and having a conversation and stuff like that. So custom research on Mondays and then we're going to launch uh, a masterclass on a Tuesday. And this may be out of order, but for guys like guys and gals, like go to the gym. This is like the type of thing. Just start doing it. Right. Uh, another day we have the hype post for an upcoming interview. What I didn't like about most groups is they're all about like, I mean, I'm not going to say anybody's names, but they're all about that person. Right. Like, I'm not a big fan of that. I felt like the self spotlight isn't within my culture more. So like when everybody thinks I'm the expert it enables human beings to be like, he's not good at that thing. And it tears me down. And it's like, guys, I'm really at the same stage as you. I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm a real life human being. I'm only 30 or 60, 90 days ahead of the curve. Like, like, don't put me up here. Like I mess up just like everybody else. I happen to be interviewing somebody that has done this. I think they might be smarter. Did you guys want to join? Did you guys want to watch? Um, and this person's like, yeah, Jeff, let's talk. Right. Um, the same way you're interviewing me, you're sharing the spotlight. I've done it with now like 60 other people that are vastly smarter than me. A side effect of this is when I do my hype post, I can say, Hey guys, if you're interested, comment below, we're going to tag you on the live. Cause you know what I hate when like I'm doing a thing and then I forgot that I wanted to do it. I'm too busy on the next day. And it's like, Oh, they went live and I totally forgot. I want you to tag me. Right. 
and I've, I pay a, a very nice woman that has helped save my life so many times based out of the Philippine to tag people on the thread. And now we got people watching that aren't like just normal people in the group, like sidelining, like these are people that are like, yo, I like that. I want to watch. And so now we have like comments that are like, yo, how did you do this? What about this? All that fun stuff. And our bullet points tie into the customer research in the masterclass. So everything is on sense. Everything mm -hmm. makes sense, right? And so Monday is customer research. Tuesday is the launch post. Wednesday is the hype post for somebody else. Not me, for somebody else. I just happen to be interviewing them. The mm -hmm. Thursday is that, uh, that actual interview. And I send it out to my entire list. Hey, everybody, we're interviewing this person. Here's the bullet points. Here's everything that we're going over. Very direct, makes a lot of sense. We're not just like, like feeling it out. Nope, we've got an agenda. These are people's time. Like it's massively valuable. Um, it's very limited. We have to make sure that they can tune in and, and get a problem solved and have it make a lot of sense. And this person, by the way, now doesn't have to answer the same question a million times by PM, right? Like that's why people aren't involved in groups more because like as soon as I open up on my messenger, I got 99 PMs, I'm like, this sucks, right? And so now that no longer happens to me and it happens a lot less to the people that I interview because we answer the questions in the interview. More so as like a side effect because I have the cash, I can chop up these interviews and do letter boxes and give them as a gift, right? But mm -hmm. now like the person is like, this group isn't just about Jeff, it's about a tribe of people Jeff just happens to be leading at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I can learn as a person, that guy or gal can share some knowledge and grow as a person as well and ultimately find the people that he wants to take on his or her journey. And it ends up being very, very fulfilling to have like a good 60 minute conversation. They get famous, I get famous, Everybody has a problem solved. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Friday is the actual masterclass itself where I bring on an expert. Sometimes it's that interviewee. Sometimes it's somebody else. But we go live. We talk for the average masterclass is like 60 minutes. If it's super long, it's an hour and a half, maybe an hour, and, uh, maybe like two hours. But all we do is in-depth answer the questions from the customer research and in the agenda. And ultimately, the reason why is because like I know this is for my lunch and learn and my coffee talks. Like, like some problems can't be solved with two or three sentences. Like they, they just can't, if they could, they would have been solved. Right. And so we've, uh, we've done interviews with people that run million dollar businesses, people that run million dollar month businesses, people down from zero to one guy, his personal income is $600,000 a month. He employs 20 people. He just walks around all day. Like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, like he just, he works three hours a day. I was like, I want to be you. What are you talking about? Right? Like, and we've done like, real life masterclasses that are intimate and close and people get to ask that person a question. We have an agenda and it's worth many, many times what this person has paid. We just did an interview with somebody that's figured out how to take a, a masterclass with somebody that figured out how to take a local gym client entirely online, double his margins, get random people from the town signing up saying, I want to pay you every month. And then I want to want you to upsell me for a one-time thing. And then when your gym reopens, I want to pay you $2,000 for your long membership. That is massively powerful, like beyond a shadow of that. Imagine if every single client had that option, like they wouldn't have to worry about paying their mortgage, like in the middle of like all this recession or Corona or shutdown, you could go to client and be like, Hey, I know everything is shut down. We've got a backup plan. That's the type of powerful stuff. And that's because we did a masterclass with that guy and he showed everything and everybody who showed up got everything. And now they can go to their clients do the same exact thing. And this person white labels, which is even cooler. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that really enables a lot of opportunities. What's really interesting, by the way, is none of these steps are about me. The custom research is not about me. The masterclass is not about me. The hype post is not about me. The interview is not about me. It's about the people that are part of the tribe. And I really think that the ASFAM has a engagement or an impact comparable to groups that are like three, four or five or in 10 times as big, because it's not about one person just constantly trying to sell us stuff. I do sell stuff. It's an honest knowledge and relationship. Everybody's okay with it because of everything else that I'm doing. Like people still buy concert tickets to Justin Bieber, this analogy is in Tribe of Buyers, right? Like, like people buy Justin Bieber's concerts or they can get it for free. They just go on iTunes or the radio. It's totally okay to sell tickets, right? Um, and because of that, like my knowledge and skills have improved. Uh, your knowledge and skills have improved. Your clients have gone from zero to an F ton of money, right? Uh, people in my tribe have gone from zero to an F ton of money. I think we're joking like, like there's a 23 year old that's making like, $30,000 a month. I was like, that's too much money for a 23 year old. What are you doing with your life? Like, yo, do you go back to school and be sad? What are you doing with a thousand dollars a day? No, man, save your money. What are you doing? Think about retirement. Like, oh my God. Right. 
Um, yeah. So, so I hope everybody watched it. Like, I definitely gave you an agenda. Um, what's really, really cool is if any one of these steps fail, it's just like a bad day at the gym. That's okay. You've got the next day at the gym. Um, if you have a Saturday and Sunday where everything is going to hell, that's okay. You've got your Monday, your Tuesday, and your Wednesday. If you feel like your your tribe is like filtering off in the wrong direction. That's cool, man. Ask customer research, figure out what their next big problem. Cause like your goal should not be to put people into a pen, but instead to be going on a journey with them and constantly solving their problems and finding experts that can do it. And because of that, you've got a huge cohort of people that are moving up and that could lead to in-person events. Like you showed me how to do that could lead to in-person conferences. Like you showed me how to do master classes. Like you showed me how to do uh, 90 day coaching programs, six week coaching programs, uh, elite programs like you showed me how to do. And that's ultimately allowed me to go from zero to the number that we mentioned earlier. So yeah, yeah, there you go. So we've gone from the very beginning to growing your group to the entire structure behind the content in the Facebook group. And I want to highlight the, the theme for everybody here, which is simply people don't pay you money because you want money and it's about you. People pay you money because you figure out the problems yep. that they want solved and you help them solve those problems. That's when they pay you money. Yep. So throughout this process, it's just showing up. Uh, it's about delivering content that helps people solve their problems. Um, and if they want to go faster and if they want to be a part of a community that helps them go faster, and yep. if they want somebody to tell them exactly what to do to go faster, they buy into your coaching program. Correct. Yep. And my, I, back when I was like afraid of failure, I had this huge aversion of like asking for money or being comfortable accepting money and things like that. Um, I found that more people are comfortable paying you money than you expect. And whatever hangups you have about receiving money are with you and you alone. Um, you use money for everything. And, and more people are comfortable saying, hey, I've got money. What am I getting in exchange for it? And how do I give it to you? If you've done all the things that we mentioned before. Um, it's, it's still strange sometimes for me to be on the receiving end of dollars because like it's exciting. And I'm like, I still think of myself, like I'm just a real life human being, like what makes me deserving of this X money, but you really should be viewing in terms of the impact that you're making in a real life human beings life, the, the acceleration of their journey and their timeline and how you're moving roadblocks. Like if, if somebody is like a uh, national superstar and they're playing soccer and the surgeon comes in and says, Oh, he broke his shin. Like the surgeon's brain shouldn't be saying, I'm not deserving of $5,000 to do the surgery. The surgeon should be saying, we're going to put this guy's leg back together and get him back on doing so he can make his money, support his family and get in front of a million and a half people every single week. And to do that, it's just going to cost money. Is that okay? That's what my brain goes through now. And, and because of it, it's helped unlock, level me up and, and put me in a position where I can instill that with the people that I serve. And now they can go to their clients and, and ask for a fair rate as well. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. So one more thing that I want to talk about is the evolution from a six figure business to a seven figure business and the big shift with charging more. Yeah. Your, your skills leveled up. Um, you can solve more problems. You're more confident in helping people. The natural evolution is that you charge more and you yep. make more money because of it. Um, so what was your, I know we, there was a, a lot of hesitation before uh, we were able to, uh, raise your prices, but yeah. um, we finally did it yeah. um, with your inner circle and then with your elite program. Yep. What was your, what were the challenges? What was, what were the things that you had to work through yeah. and ultimately what helped you raise your prices? And if you can add on top of that, um, your, uh, your mastermind that you hosted and launch yeah. your, your elite program. So when I opened up the inner circle, it was nine ninety seven, and uh, the IC now is, is five to six times that rate. I really want to get it to 10 times that rate. Um, a $10,000 program, like I can, I can include a lot of done for you services. I can pay people that are worth thousand dollar an hour and pay them to come in and teach things that will last forever. Right. You can't do that if you're charging very, very little. The, the biggest hangup I had about charging 997 was why am I deserving of this? That was where my brain was like, why am I deserving a thousand dollars versus everybody else? And that's, that's just a whole bunch of mental crap that you don't have to go through, but you're going to go through it for no reason. Like it's like, um, like if you're massively obese, for some reason you have to convince yourself, like, am I deserving a six pack? It's not a conversation that you can win. Like, don't even try to have that conversation. Just focus on serving somebody else and solving their big ass problems. 
And when I would sell my Facebook ads program done for you, I would literally say like, hey, Mr. Johnson, if I'm understanding correctly, you're losing out on a $10,000 bike sale every two weeks because your staff isn't trained correctly. If I'm understanding that correctly, you're losing $20,000 a month? You're losing a quarter million dollars because you haven't trained the, give me a thousand bucks, I'll fucking train them. Like that's where your brain should go. You should say like, this is the problem and I'm just solving it in exchange for money. Like this is the bigger problem with solving exchange for money. I never found any winning with me trying to figure out if I was deserving of it. It's like, no, no, we're just gonna focus on big ass problems. And even as I go through my uh, new agency journey with built to sell processes and built to sell vision and systems and, and team, like I'm only taking on clients and we have this conversation. If I understand Mr. Johnson, you got a thousand customers every single month. And the number one reason why you haven't gone to 2000 is because you don't have a way to get people to call your phone five to 10 times a day, right? If I understand him correctly, that's a million dollar a year problem. Are you comfortable if I charge you 10% of that? Yes. Now I've got a hundred thousand dollar a year contract. Like I don't have to have a question of like, am I worth a hundred thousand dollars? Am I solving a big enough problem? And that's like the number one thing that helps that move me through the transition of increasing my prices. Um, I've also rebuilt my course several times, making sure that I can focus on making it actually shorter. I thought you'd pay more, you get more. Mm, no, 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 no. Money likes speed. People like speed. People like solving their problems quickly and effectively. That's why personal trainers always cap out $100 an hour, but plastic surgeons will always charge five grand. Mm -hmm. This is gonna take you eight weeks, this is gonna take you eight hours. Which one are you gonna pay for? That's just how the world works. That's how people work. And so when I did my next re uh, I'm in the middle of my rebuild now. I'm one third of the way in. I took what was my inner circle, which was like, I think if you add up the hours, it was like a thousand hours of stuff. Nobody ever, no, they, it's not going to happen, right? Like, thanks for buying the encyclopedia store. Like, no, that ain't going to fucking happen, right? So I rebuilt it and all my videos are like 10 minutes long at the most. They have homework to do's and accountability with each one. What was a thousand hours will probably be closer to 20. We have people that are landing a $2,000 client within two weeks. That's never happened with the old course, right? People like speed, money likes speed. So once I discovered that like, I don't have to worry about am I deserving, but instead what's the magnitude of the problem and how fast can I solve it? It made complete and total sense for me to increase my prices. I was mm -hmm. totally fine with it. And because the culture of the IC and, and in your tribe as well, I'm pretty sure in any paid group is like, hey, what were your wins? Every Friday we get on a call and say, wins, losses, and big learning moments. What did you do? And people are like, hey, so I did, I did the video thing and I got 90 leads in 30 minutes and I closed somebody at $2,500. I was like, you joined last week. He's like, yeah, was that right? I was like, yes, what do you, what do you mean? Of course it was. He's like, all right, just check in. I was kind of intimidated. I just did whatever you said. And yeah, this is the best ROI ever. I was like, why aren't you happier? He's like, I don't know. Like I just, just part of my journey. I was like, fine. But like, that's the type of stuff. Like if somebody can pay you five grand or 10 grand and get, you know, 2,500 returned in a week and do that repeatedly, you are now solving a million dollar problem and you're just charging mm -hmm. a percentage of it. So those are like the two big things. I do want to say that you really pushed me to do an in-person event. When we did one in November, it was so damn fucking cool. If it wasn't for you and Steph signs, I wouldn't have figured it out at all. Like my brain was already like stressed out and freaked out and too many moving boxes. I said, I can, I can do the pitches. I can do the speeches. I can do the slides, but I, I can't organize any of the in between. And you're like, Jeff, I got you. And Steph was like, Jeff, I got you. He was like, great. Here's money. You're worth it. Go for it. Right. Um, and we had 30 people flying from across the world. I had no idea that was, I thought people were going to drive from like Palm Beach to Miami at the most, right? We had people fly in from London. I was like, oh my God, like, thank you, I guess. Like, wow, that's nuts, right? And when you had your first in-person event in San Diego, you, San Diego, or sorry, in Tampa, right? Orlando, yeah. right? The, you also, uh, yeah. Where we had it at, uh, who's the famous guy? Uh, uh, sticks or something. Or, yeah, the drummer of Sticks. We rented yeah. out his house and didn't even know that was that was the weirdest thing. But yeah, we yeah. had a guy from Leeds fly in, which yeah. at that point, I was like a year and a half into my Facebook group's journey. And I'm like, people are flying from around the world to see right. me? This is weird. It's crazy, yeah. right? But when you think of like, of course people would fly in for ClickFunnels. Of course people <laughs> would fly in for Mastermind. You and I do it all the time. 
but it's ultimately because that person doesn't really care how they're feeling or whether or not they're deserving of money. It's like, are we solving a big enough problem fast? Right. Mm -hmm. And so at the in-person event, we had 30 people. We rented two houses. I switched sleeping between the houses because everybody wanted to hang out. Uh, I was on a 48 hour caffeine too much. What's the opposite of deprivation? Uh, abundance, caffeine abundance and sleep deprivation scenario, right? Um, overdose. And over, overdose is about right. Caffeine overdose and sleeping <laughs> underdose, right? What was funny is uh, Becker was there, Steph was there, Jeff Lopez was there, Christine, David, uh, Nick Corm, like the whole crew, like the come up IC crew was there. And they were like partying and stuff like that. And I drew the short straw and I had the bedroom next to the speakers in the stereo. So now I had no sleep at all for like two hours. And then I had to go like do my new slides, but it was mad cool. And here's the craziest part. We had two people that had been chatting over messenger. They're part of the IC trying to figure out what they could do together. So they went and then they launched a thing. And now they're doing $45,000 a month. I was like, yeah. That's supposed to happen. Yeah, sure. Right. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, that, that type of stuff happens. Like when you have in-person events and that in-person event, again, it wasn't about me. It was about the people that we served. And so all the speeches weren't mine. I was doing one about, uh, about digital products and how you can sell your done for your clients digital your product down sales. And then we had really awesome players like Steph and Brandon Becker and Christine seal and Jeff Lopez. Uh, we had, uh, Jose Soto, uh, Dave Murillo was in the audience. We had like 35 people. It was crazy. Dave Murillo is Christine's partner now. Mm. And it was so damn cool to listen to their thought processes and how they're accomplishing their goals. And to have somebody like Jeff Lopez say like, yo, Jeff, you don't understand. Like when I joined up the IC, that was last 997 and we did $65,000 last month. I was like, oh my God. Uh, like when uh, Steph signs is like, you have no idea the impact you and Andrew have had in my life. And she shows striped screenshots. And now she, she, she's been secretly been donating to a charity to fix baby's cleft palates. I was like, you never told anybody that. She's like, yeah, but now I did, right? Or like when we took Brandon Becker like halfway through for nothing, we had no idea that dude was like at the bottom of the bottom. And like, I think two months ago, he did like $35,000 a month, right? Like that's because you took out of me the problems that we could solve on the board. Those are the same problems for the people there. Mm -hmm. Right. And going through that transformation and realizing that like, like there's no winning trying to figure out if, if you're deserving of it and moving to saying, uh, it's about the speed and the intensity and the size of problems that we're solving. And then having in-person events that built connections and businesses. That's like, that's a three tenants to a million dollar year business right mm -hmm. out of the gate. Agreed. Yeah, dude. Uh, we have some questions to answer if you have time. Yeah, go for it. And if you guys, uh have any more questions drop them down below we'll get them answered and ask here because you're not going to pm me i'm not going to respond i have like <laughs> 99 plus okay that's the whole theme today yeah um and jeff i told you this before the interview but i want to tell you this again that uh uh when i was coming up with my facebook group you were one of my first interviews uh you were the one that helped me with my uh agency my facebook ads agency uh, and, um, I would not be at this point, uh, without you, uh, so thank that. you so much. Um, and if you guys go back through the Facebook group over the past two years, I've interviewed Jeff in here more than just about anybody else. Yep. Um, and I just want to say, I'm so grateful for you, brother. So thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that a lot. Um, if it wasn't for you flying down and yelling at me for two hours to do that, uh, none of this would exist. Nothing like every case that I just shared with you was because you got me out of my brain, out of my head, built out tribe of buyers, built out authority accelerator. The ass fam wouldn't exist. 44,000 people would still be trying to struggle to like to figure out how to get clients. Uh, there'd be no master classes. There'd be no group engine, nothing like that. That's all because you specifically chose me and said like, let's fucking fix your shit. And I was like, okay, but I'm going to, I'm going to be resistant the whole way type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I appreciate it, man. And that just makes me think about like the ripple effect of coaching. Yep. Like by you, by people not scaling their coaching business, and if they, they really have a gift inside of them to coach and make people better and help people, like there's such a massive ripple effect to yep. coach, which I love. So if you guys are watching out there, um, like work with coaches, work with mentors. If it's, if it's us, awesome. We, we'd love to serve you. But regardless, find somebody that, that speaks to you. 
uh, and work with mentors and coaches and just yep. grow. Um, yep. That's the main point, but uh, we got questions here for you. I don't know if I can scroll all the way up, so we're going to start from the bottom. Uh, we'll start with uh, Gallen. I screw her name up every time, and I feel terrible because of it. Uh, <laughs> she says, if people are not active in your group and responding to your training or posts, um, are they not interested in what you're teaching, or is what you're teaching not solving a problem? So, uh, Miss Ferguson, Fer Ferguson. That I should just do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's up, G? Um, uh, so, what I've discovered is that when I do my custom research, half the time I'm wrong. Like, I, a lot of my custom research posts have failed because I don't know what's going on in my, my people's brains or how they're communicating. So, I thoroughly expect, by the way, like half my custom research on Monday to bomb. I know by the middle of the day, I'm like, that one didn't work. We're just going to delete that real fast. But I've got a huge list of CRs that have been massively successful. The point I'm trying to make is that you should not be expecting to know what people want unless you ask them. Like you have to ask them, but you don't want to ask like an oddly specific question. You want to ask a question that starts this conversation. So like the ask method by Ryan Levasque, need, wants, fears, and goals, what you hate, what you tried. That's it. It's really five questions, but the seventh one and sixth one make a lot more sense. So like, hey, what's the number one problem you're having in your agency right now? People will tell you. Uh, what's the number one thing you've tried to solve this problem? That's a separate custom research, but they'll tell you. Um, what's the number one thing you hate about your clients? They'll tell you. Uh, what have you always wanted to learn about Facebook as they will tell you? Those are all separate custom research posts. And I know this because I do them. And like I mentioned before, half the time, they don't respond because it doesn't make any sense for them. And if it doesn't make any sense, I don't talk about it anymore. Or I, I wait until like a couple months to like reconfirm that's not a conversation that they want. So if your question is like, if people are not active and not responding to your training or posts, that means it doesn't solve a problem specific for them, A, or B, it does not use the words they are using to describe their problem like tribal language. And so a really great example is like, we all know a chiropractor that thinks he's way too smart and talks about your C4 and your C5. I have no idea what that means at all, right? But I do know that my lower back hurts and I've got numbness in my left leg whenever I run up the stupid hill trying to lose weight. So if a chiropractor wants me to have a conversation with him, do not mention C4 and C5. Instead, mention I've got numbness, numbness in my left leg and my lower back hurts. I don't even think that's the right letter, by the way. I think C is like your neck. I don't even know, right? So if a, if a chiropractor is like, hey, what's wrong with your C4 and C5? I wouldn't talk. But if, the, if the, the chiropractor said, hey, what's wrong with your running? I'd be like, yo, my left leg is numb as shit and I need you to fix this. So I hope that frames a good answer for you, G. Ultimately, it's because people aren't interested and it's probably the words you're using to describe their problems. Go back, read the conversations, uh, read the posts, throw some stuff on the wall. You'll find something that sticks. And then what happens if it does stick? Keep the conversation going. Ask more questions. What about this? What about that? Is this really a problem? Just like a doctor, if you sit in the office, he doesn't operate on you immediately. He asks like more questions, right? And so when I get a custom research response of like, yeah, my number one problem with my agency is I can't seem to get clients. I would say, uh, what are the three methods that you've tried? I've tried cold emailing. Okay, but what's your X? What do you mean, what's my X? The X is your offer. Do you have a direct offer in your emailing? No, what's that? Are you sending out like, like a, I almost said the guy's name, but like one of the guys that like um, popularized like long form cold emailing. Are you sending out a cold email with like 18 sentences in it? He's like, yeah. I was like, don't do that. Just send a short one. Have a conversation. That will catch like wildfire. It'll be worth reading and more people contribute. So I, I hope that answers your question in a way that makes sense. The five things are needs, wants, fears, and goals, what you hate or what you tried. Those are the seven things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Um, how do you deal with resistance? This is from David. How do you deal with resistance or rejection from people in groups? Uh, and, I Go ahead. I was going to say like, David, can you get more specific with that? Like, I'm not sure what he means by resistance or rejection. I think it might be other groups. Um, and I think that comes down to posting the wrong things in other groups. Yes, yes. And if, uh, there's a good way and there's a, there's a bad way. Um, yeah. Most people do it the bad way. Um, quick solution for you guys, hop over to the unit section. There's a five-day group growth and engagement challenge. That will answer your question right there. There we go. Uh, uh, Miss Ferguson is asking about uh, letter boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are like letter boxes? Um, 
Yeah. What are what you, she's, <laughs> that was the, that was this question? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was the end of the question. Yeah. So uh, I know that when I do interviews, I'm literally taking somebody's time. And I've discovered that if I just make it worth many, many times their money, even though they're doing it for free and I don't pay them and the interview is worth it, I just want to like up the value and up the ante. More so when I do interviews, that's like content that I can re-leverage. And so I'm seeing this like thing, like, like imagine like I wrote this book and I'm like, how do I distribute it or chop it up in a way that makes sense? And Gary Vee's been hitting me like day after day after day with like all of his letter, all of his videos. And I'm like, why can't I do that? Like, what's so hard? So I was like, oh, I should shoot content. And that never felt good. It never felt real. It was like, I was like trying to shoot content. I had like a camera video, was stupid. And so what we ended up doing is I hired a, a guy to just watch my interviews and take the, the smart parts. Like if, if I said something smart or the interviewee says something smart, fucking clip it and put what they said at the top of the bottom. Do that. And you know what happens? They love it. Like it is so cool. And now like they've got their own stuff that they can use. I've got stuff we can use. Like there's ads, there's smart parts or, or smart clips that they can use. They get the raw stuff and like, it's beautiful. And the cool part about that is I can use that to push to my Instagram, uh, Facebook ads or YouTube. And then the other person nine times out of 10 does the same thing. So we both get the exposure that we expect. Um, and more so because like the way I do my interviews are like bullet point driven or complete ideas and sentences like we're doing now. You can take a 90 second or two minute clip, put a top bar, put a bottom bar, and then you've got all the content you've ever needed forever. Just like that. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, those letter boxes are super sweet. Yep. Uh, so we have a bunch of questions. I'm just gonna run down these and make sure everybody gets their questions answered. Uh, Jeff said that starting out, he had little three tribes. Uh, did you mean that he was interacting in other Facebook groups? Yes. Yep. Uh, what were your strategies for growing the group? We talked about that uh, midway through this uh, interview. So if you want to go through that, um, check it out. Uh, do you have your group set to private or public when growing it? It's private. Um, so you can ask three questions before somebody joins your group. Uh, and you don't get as many spammers in your group. Um, uh, b -b 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 my guess is that he has three to, oh, he's talking about the same thing. We just answered that. Uh, would you respond to those, uh, questions answered with a live video or in the comments back to them? I forget what the, the I think the customer research question. So if, if it's customer research, um, I respond in text on the thread but I try to do it in a way to where like it makes sense and I can keep the conversation going and not sound like, I mean, the, the biggest problem with text is that like, if I sense it's being a little bit snooty, the whole thing is wrong. Like you can just attribute so many emotions that aren't correct. So I try to write it out in a way that deals with like, uh, like a complete answer in a way that's easy to read without, without it being misinterpreted. So sometimes I'll be like, hey, this is gonna sound pretty snotty and I don't mean it as such, so I'm just gonna say it. You obviously are not doing customer research and you're leaning in, showing your ad right in there. Like again, sorry, I just don't know any other way to say it. So like anybody could read, they'd be like, Jeff is being an ass. I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna be an ass, but like I don't know how to say it other than you're obviously not. And so like I keep on the thread, answer questions, do it in a bullet point format and make sure that's easy to read without like coming off like too much of an asshole. But sometimes I do, so I say I don't mean to be an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, guys, if you got any value out of this interview, hit that heart button, hit that like button. It helps the algorithm, helps reach more people, helps help more people. Um, and, Jeff, was there anything that we didn't ask you that we should have? I, I think that the number one reason why people are not having more success is because they don't have somebody that was one or two or three steps ahead of them. Like, if, if and I use the gym analogy all the time, like, if you are massively obese, like, yeah, you could read the book, but you've probably already read the book. Like you've probably tried to figure it out and you're in this box and you're not really sure what the hell's going on. Like you're massively unhealthy and you require someone else to get you there. Personal trainer, doctor, friend, coach, whatever it is. Most times the problem that you've experienced is not the first time that problem has existed. It's not the first time someone else has experienced the problem. It's not the first time that a solution has existed for the problem, but it is the first time for you. And you desperately need 99 times out of 100 that people who are successful take this approach. You desperately need somebody to take you from where you are to where you want to be. It just requires a person. 
So actively go out and find someone who's been where you are, who's living the life that you want and get you there. Like th there's, there's no reason to be living in your box and, and not accomplishing the goals. And what'll happen is like, you'll be, tur you'll turn 35 like I did. And either be like, yo, damn, being 35 is awesome. Like, hell yeah. I've got like an office and a bomb has a partner and like I'm making money and people like me and I'm going to do a conference. It's going to be fucking great. Or, or you can be 35 and still have the same fucking problems you've had when you were 30, which are probably the same problems you have when you're 25. And the only difference is if you've got somebody else that can take you there, it's usually not you. You can't keep watching YouTube videos. You can't keep watching articles or reading articles. You can't keep reading books. If it was going to work, it already did. And every time you've ever graduated, it was a teacher. Every time you've lost weight, it was probably a coach. Every time you've had something done in your house, it was somebody else. So go find that other person that has the result that you want. Say like, hey, let's do this. It usually costs money and 99 times out of 10, it's worth it. I meant to say 100, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well over had, 100. Had it perfect up until the last part. <laughs> I think that's the best way to end this interview, brother. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, what you've given me and also for showing up inside of the programs and yep. just crushing it. Um, and I appreciate you so much, brother. Thank you so much. You got it. Catch you guys later.